It's not easy being queen. <laughs> so many subjects to keep in line. So many scores to settle. I am the Swarm. And vengeance has never looked this good. Welcome back to HCC Europe. We are currently tied up here with Expert and Fnatic sitting at 1-1, and we'll be gearing up for a game number three. Caldor, your first cast in the league here on week number six. How's it shaping up for you? I love it. It's yeah. exactly what we were hoping for, and I am having a lot of fun with these games. It's really exciting. And yeah, the last game in particular, great ending to uh, a very explosive second map, and we have a tie going into game number three. I love it. What I love about it is just it's quite next to the to the actual core of how he does his shot calling. They either win or they lose at that point. They had such a great early game, but they understood that Expert was getting into a point where they could really start to run away with the game. And so Fnatic says, all right, let's make the call, and they execute. That was so cool to watch. Yeah, to me, the one thing that I have to question a bit now, having seen the game, is mm. the Yorick pick, because I think if you... We had Falstead as an option. Blade has played a lot of Falstead, so he could have gone on Falstead instead. Sure. And the one thing that, what did Leoric do? Basically, he tried to get experience and he tried to push in, like on all of the lanes. He usually joined fights pretty late, which in itself is not necessarily a bad thing. But in the fights, they kind of banked a little bit on the Entomb, I want to say. But I just like think about, okay, what could they have picked there instead of a Leoric that might have had the better impact? And I feel like using a global could have been uh, just opening those fights up a lot more than it did because oftentimes Leoric arrived a bit too late. So you could see the strategy. The question is just like, would another hero pick maybe have had more of an impact to what they were trying to do? Yeah, could you have optimized it? Well, game number three, our teams will be thinking about that. Let's find out which battleground we'll be moving into. Fnatic will be getting the battleground choice and we are going to one of their tried and true old battlegrounds, Sky Temple. That doesn't really shock, like if Fnatic is able to uh, pick the map, I mean, what are they gonna go for? They will most likely pick Sky Temple and they also have a preference for Tomb of the Spider Queen. But right now, I think what we're gonna see in the draft is again, bans and mm -hmm. early picks on the globals. That's yep. what you have to do. If you play Fnatic on this map, you want to make sure that they don't get too many of the globals because you are going to pay for them later. Yeah, Falstad in particular is one that Fnatic has ran all the time in the past. Quacknix really showing off that gameplay and understanding how to do the rotation. So Falstad gameplay, probably going to be banned out here from Expert. If not, I would be absolutely shocked to see that. Yeah, the thing with Falstad is you can have Quacknix on him, but I think Quacknix himself... I would say he's more comfortable on the Greymane if you can play him. Yep. For a long time we had Greymane, I don't want to say disappear, but he took a bit more of a minor role in the in the meta, at least in Europe. Right now, he's starting to really push in again. Sure. So uh, that's going to be the question. How much do they value the Falstad over the Greymane if they can get their hands on another global like the Haka, for example? So I could see them prioritize the Haka for Wubi again. He has an insane record on the hero. And for uh, maybe... Uh, for, uh, sorry, um, Quacknix try to get the, the Greymane instead. And on the other side, you have some odd heroes are starting to kind of climb a little bit more. Sonya, in particular, is great on this battleground for Mercenary. She can hold that top lane. She does match well against the Haka. Maybe more so than Ragnaros used to. Ragnaros didn't get picked too much on this battleground, but with a slight nerve, suddenly he's a little bit worse overall. Uh, the Molten Core is one of the main reasons why you pick him anymore. And that's why he was so good on Braxis. And even then, he was a fifth pick. So uh, lots of cool things to think about, especially with that Dahaka, the Sonya, maybe even Thrall making a comeback. Yeah, and the one thing that we haven't seen for you yet, we still need your Chromie one point, right? The Chromester, not on Sky Temple. Probably not That's on this That's the one map. moment where I'm like, <laughs> okay, guys, what are we doing here? Uh, but okay, wait a moment. There's actually maps where, where, where you fanboying Chromie and like, Mercury The fanboy level goes down. Yeah, it actually okay. is a thing. It's, it's a thing. It's yeah. mostly because I've been casting so much now that I'm starting to become a little bit more jaded. I'm not like, everything works. I'm less rainbows now. <laughs> <laughs> little little less rainbow, uh, but overall I like we're it. Good. I like it. All right, but <laughs> we might see tomb for you later. There you have a good. There shot. you go. I'm I'm all about that life. So here we are. Sky Temple expert fanatic tied one one. Expert will walk away with the first ban. Yeah. So at this point, you really I mean you either first pick a global or you ban it out right now. You don't want to leave fanatic too many options for this, as we said. And I mean, shocking. The false stat ban. What? They banned false stat? Who saw that coming? I didn't see it coming, Calder. I didn't see it coming either. I didn't see it either, man. Totally surprised. Uh, so now suddenly Fnatic has a choice here. They can ban out Dahaka if they want to make it more of a straight up game. That's, uh, by the way, the moment when I wanted to see Kappa's in Twitch chat. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Kappa life. There's that Tassadar ban. 
being taken away. Fnatic going back to the roots. All right, stage has been set. Zarya is still in. We have Tehaka still available. Zarya that we've seen in the last few games is still in there. So that's two big options that we have seen played around a lot in terms of damage dealers. What we have seen so far and what seems to be the dominant theme within Europe right now is early picks on Vala as well. But of course, if you're a team expert, you have only one pick available. So you really need to ask yourself, how much do we value that Tehaka? Yeah. And expert in the past for trends, they don't value it that much, honestly. Uh, they go for the Lucio. Yeah. Instead here. Lucio has been banned both of the games. His priority is extremely high, so that makes sense for them to go into uh, the Lucio. But now they gave up the Haka, and it would be a bit shocking to see Fnatic not use the hero. So I would expect that we are having at least the Haka being picked. The question then remains what exactly they want to team that up with. And I guess the only reason why you would deha leave the Haka out is if you want to play a Zarya composition with something else than the Haka. I think the Haka Malfurion here? The Haka Malfurion or the Haka Greybane would be the choice for me. Both of them are fine. My only thought process is how high do they value their Zarya that they've shown in the last few games. That's the only thing that's still a little bit in the back of my head when I'm thinking about, okay, what's going to be the priority play for them? Because if they don't pick it, let's say, for example, let the Haka slide right now and they're saying, okay, we're not getting him, then either Expert is going to pick him up or they're going to ban him out. So if you don't pick the Haka now, you're not going to get access to him. So they know that. But if they let the Zarya slide, then they have a Lucio um, maybe with the Zarya against them, and that's also not really... That's not very fun to play against. No, not really. Like, that's annoying. And they let both of them slide. Okay, so Greymane and the Anubarak instead. Anubarak. Didn't see that Didn't see that coming. We talked about the priority of Anubarak overall and like it. Greymane, we've elaborated a bit about how if Falset is not available, Quarknix would probably look towards that Greymane. He can also play that Vala that we uh, pointed out earlier. But that they would completely let Zarya and also the Anu, uh, sorry, the, the Haka go potentially over to Expert or let them slide for now. Didn't really expect that. I thought a Nuborak pick might be something that they take a little bit later down the road. Yeah, usually you pick him as a counter pick, but I do think there is a warrant to pick him up against Lucio. What do you want against Lucio? You want hard engage, you want to get some kind of lockdown. Uh, first off, his natural basic abilities, his Impale and his Burrow Charge does give you that engage if you connect it. And two, if you really want to go Ham Taro, uh, you pick up the Cocoon. It's also still a question who's going to play it. Because True. as I said earlier, usually Breeze loves to play the hero, he just doesn't get to play him a lot, that's his problem. So normally we have a composition for them where we have um, instead simply Wubi on him. But depending on what they put Wubi on, if Azaria comes into play, we might actually see him uh, instead like switching around from the last game. Breeze taking maybe the Anubura, giving the Zarya over to Wubi, that could happen. Both of them are really good at playing those heroes. So. That could be the case. But as expected, with them not picking the Haka, Expert is immediately saying, okay, boys, we got him. So they take the Haka for themselves. They combo it with an Arthur's. Arthur's Lucio is a great combo, actually, just because you get the additional movement speed for Arthur's. He's way more uh, agile on the battleground, and hence also the Medivh ban. Medivh ban being taken out. We know about the Medivh from Expert. You want hard engage with Mediv gives that for Arthas without him having to actually come in for a flank, which is one of the things that he has to do. Is he has a really hard time kind of just walking forward. He can live forever, but he normally doesn't get that lockdown you want. Now, the out of their ban may look a little bit odd, but it's actually very strong here. One with Greymane, and two, we've seen it in the past here. Wubby has ran some out there as of late in a couple of tournaments as well. So, expert taking away the Amethyr and taking away that really strong engage that Greymane can have if he has that shield. Yeah, also if you have the, the double... Greymane jumping in with a clone. Uh, my question is really a bit towards Vala now, because with Greymane that you have, I mean, Fnatic is really a team where we usually see Quarknix on both of these heroes. We haven't seen a Vala being picked. She is making an appearance in nearly every game that we've seen so far. So there is a point to be made for Fnatic trying to pick her up and trying to like, take her away from a potential pick on expert side, because both of these teams, Nick has played Vala before in this series. We've seen him play lately quite a bit. Vala has a high priority in Europe right now. Fnatic decided to go with Greymane over Vala, but with experts actually going into support and double frontline, you could have made an argument with a false side being banned out for taking an auto attack away. But then, as you said, we've also seen quite a bit of Zulji in the past. Expert, I'm looking at you guys. What are you moving into here? They I mean, I feel right now that I would really say Vala. Yeah, just Vala straight up or right away from Nick. 
They have ran Tychus in the past. I think it's a little bit odd here, though, against the new Rack Interior. The thing about Fnatic is they've got definitely a very strong dive composition, but if they don't get a kill immediately on whatever Squishy is picked here for Expert, Expert can turn around with an Arthas Engage and a Haka Drag. Is this a curveball now? They're waiting very long for these two picks. This is like one of these things where we have the uh, ADRD draft coming into play. It's a trace. Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> there is no way! <laughs> uh, first off, I don't think he was talking about this moment. Uh, I'm so happy HEC is back, but I'm so happy, period. HEC oh. is back, exclamation mark. Gazzo in the mix here. Arty, what are you doing to my Hero League experience? <laughs> <laughs> it will be Gazlord's all week. Like, what? The Gazlord is in the house. With how long they waited, I just said it. Like, is this an ADRD moment? And I feel like this is the definition of that's, the... That's just ADRD. Oh, my so, God. So, oh, Fnatic, they need to be thinking about some kind of engage and also some kind of maybe lockdown for Tracer slash Lucio. Okay, Tim. What's up? How much did you pay him? Uh, <laughs> I paid him actually to go on vacation with you. So you're going on vacation oh, with, with ADRD. <laughs> and you guys get to hang out and bro out. I told him that I could get you guys hooked up. So uh, you and ADRD are now going to the Bahamas. To the Bahamas. Just I'm for gonna, the Gazlo pick. I'm going to punish him for all the Gazlos that I count on Hero League. So I think no. <laughs> Lee Ming is going to be the pick here. You get some poke in. Oh, God. Yeah, that just happened. It did. Okay, so let's talk about Gazlo. Let's just to get just to get on <laughs> Do we have the, the road of <laughs> teaching, right? This is the HEC. Okay. Let's be a little professional, right? Okay, let's throw one thing out there. Like, while we're making jokes about Gazlo and at the same time hyping it a little bit, the one thing that I really want everyone who's currently watching this um, from home and who wants to go in the Hero League games take away from this, he was not picked first. <laughs> <laughs> Nor was he banned, if, so don't ban him out. If okay. you actually pick him, this is the spot where you pick him. Sure. You pick him last, and you pick him in a comp where you say, okay, this makes sense to me. This is something that we can run, and you surprise the opponent with it. You don't pick him first, where all the opponent has to do is just like counter pick him. Yeah. So Gazzle gives you control around the Temple Shine. You also have the ability to have a solid Gravel Bomb combo after a Sanctification if it does pop out. So now you kind of force your opponents to get a kill before... Gazlo drops down the Gravit Bomb after signification is used. And if you do get that, you have the possibility to have an automatic setup on Grammy. <laughs> and it can be strong. Kaldor can laugh all he wants. No, I just laugh. But there is a possibility. I never imagined us having this conversation. I love yeah. it. Especially on the first week. If you would have told me a week ago, Kaldor, by the way, no, our first best of five. It's expert. We, we, we are going to discuss Gaslow's <laughs> strategies. I would have said, like, Tim, go home. You're crazy. Tim, go home. <laughs> this is what we love about this team, though. This is why this team gets so many people cheering for yeah. them. Because they pull out stuff like this, and it gets us hype, man. Like, I don't know, man. I look at the draft, and I'm like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, expert, fanatic, blah, blah, blah. And I see Gaslow, and I'm like, you know what? I'm cheering for expert. I, I Okay. For my own sanity mm -hmm. and the quality of my Hero League game. Sure. I have to cheer for Fnatic. <laughs> As my, I love the Gazlo pick, don't get me wrong. I love the variety. I love that they're actually trying something. I love that they're confident in the draft. That's yeah. amazing. But for my own sanity, I need this to lose. <laughs> there is like, <laughs> there are scary moments for Expert. If a Nubrak does get the engage he wants on both Lucio or Gazlo, suddenly this composition will fall apart pretty quickly. Yeah. The thing is, like, if if AD already actually like picks it, he doesn't just like throw something out. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't say like YOLO, especially yeah. not in such an important game. So we joke about it, we banter, but in the end, if they feel confident that Gazlo is a good fit here and that this is something that can really blindside Fnatic, this is not so this is something they trained. This is something they really prepared and where they sa said, like, okay, we thought this out, this works. Wow. So I want to see their confidence now. Let's stop talking and let's start watching. Game number three, Fnatic and Expert currently tied 1-1, and we are going to Sky Temple with Gazlord of all heroes. Let's do it. Jumping into the game, and guys, once again, hashtag HTC. Let us know what you think about this composition that we're currently seeing here, because it is, as you have already seen in draft, fantastic. We have on the gas low, who else? But the mad scientist, it's AD Arty, Nick on the Tracer, Blade on the Haka, Kirsten on Lucio, and Bad Benny is rocking the Arthas. And Fnatic to the far right in the red will be running a more traditional composition. Malfurion will be played by Smexy, a Nubarak on Breeze. So Breeze is getting the hero he loves to play so much. Quagnix on Greymane, Schwimpy on Lee Ming, and finally Wubby on Tyrael.
will be on the Tyrael here. So yeah, Breeze, as you said, he's finally able to play his hero. I'm surprised that he doesn't play the love bug, though. That's usually the skill. <laughs> Every single time I played with him and he decided to go in Uberak, it was the love bug. We had major discussions about this. So uh, he usually loves that, but not this time. I am excited for this game. I mean, no joke. Right now, Gazlo. I love that he has the Martian skin here as well. So yeah, let's see Let's see what he can pull off with this. I mean, this is going to be pretty fantastic. AD Ardi is a master when it comes down to drafts and builds, and I want to see how this is working out for him. So far, it doesn't really. Can he get out of the body blocks? Breeze has it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Is that a moment where we drop the keyboard and walk away? Nope, that's a moment where it's like, we got him right where we want him. Dehaka pushing in the bottom lane, looking for experience, and you let the Goblin die in the early game because it makes Fnatic overconfident, and you want your opponents to be overconfident for the Gravel Bomb combo at level 10. This is textbook Goblin play. I thought you would say this is textbook Hero League Gazlo, but, <laughs> but no. Okay, so jokes aside, I mean, that body block was actually phenomenal, just mm. like pointing that out. Of course, like he gets ganked there by three and dies, and uh, we can just like ban on that bit. But at the same time, that body block was crazy good. Uh, Nearby's so, got a big booty, man. He yeah, walks things he like does. crazy. He does. He does. He does. So Fnatic actually getting the first kill here early on, and we have the temples activating right now. And AD already positioning himself in the mid lane, down to the bottom of the map. It's Graeming going up against Yahaka, who of course can move in here. And Gazlo is starting his position up to the top now, setting up with the turrets. And so far, I don't really think that Fnatic is going to have a lot of confidence contesting that. They're probably no. pretty happy just trading by taking the one in the middle. Yeah, you go for the trade. You go where Gazlo is not at, and you set up for that, which kind of sucks on the second temple phase, because if Gazlo gets down there before your opponent, or before Fnatic does, Expert will be able to set up really well, especially with the control from Arthas, and Tracer being the annoying fly. Fnatic may be in a spot where they have to get that second temple, so watch out for that. Fnatic's main goal right now is to soak as expertly as they can, grab the experience, grab mercenary camps, and just keep away from Gazo and let him have that temple. However, Wubby does move in. Yeah, they are going in now, and there's only one turret available at this point, so AD already is trying to set that up again. Very similar to what we saw with the Probius, of course, a little bit earlier. I mean, the whole idea here for Team Expert is to control areas. That's one of the reasons why we saw it on Braxis. It's another reason why we see it on uh, Sky Temple. You really need to know where to draft a hero like this so that you get a positional advantage heading into a certain area. We also saw a bit of trouble there for Arthur, just spelling for a second at the bot lane. I, got, I don't really want to say caught there, but Nubarak was trying to make a bit of a play, and we had still Greymane around, so that could have potentially been turned out to be dangerous for him. But so far, Fnatic is doing quite well with this expert, holding their own inexperience too. It's the second temple phase when we really have to see how this is going to work out, because then I'm kind of curious what Gazlo is going to do, but it seems like we're going to have him down at the bottom instead of potentially pushing at the top. Yeah, you want to grab these mercenary camps pretty soon and get Gazlo to the bottom, and they're actually already doing that. The Giants are being grabbed by the DRD for the moment. Bad Benny in trouble, though not really having the mobility to escape away from this fight. The root comes out. Bad Benny does start to escape, and at this point, he is just buying time. That will be a kill for Fnatic, and experience lead continues for them as they are about to hit level 7. And Fnatic now with another kill here, and that is... Uh, this could... I mean, they don't get the camp. This is like the big part. If they get the kill and then they rotate to the camp and steal that away, that would be way worse for Expert. They still have heroes at the bot lane. They can soak the experience, so it's not like too much is lost there. So that situation still is okay. The temple isn't there just yet. It's not that... It's, it's never ideal to lose a hero, but like if you lose one, this is the moment where you want to lose him. And you still have heroes to soak up the experience and when you're not losing the position at that much. Watching Gazlo here at level 4, he picked up Clockwork Steam Fist. You can see what he's going to get at level 7 here. It looks like the choice is going to be the wonderful engine gun that does slow down opposing teams. Now, this can be a really great talent around the temple phase because if you do get those auto attacks in, you get the duration built up on your turrets and you can get 304 going up and suddenly Fnatic just can't move in. That sticky goo being available on that engine gunk is too much. There are a lot about the control. If you think not only about Gazlo with the slows here on uh, the 7, but also having Arthas then in the mix and the Lucio, just like speed all of them up. So that is starting to get a bit tricky. Fnatic needs, I mean, they are probably realizing already that, oh yes, they can take oh, their picks perfect. and individual kills, but they need to make sure that they are later on not falling into the trap that you've been talking about in a team fight because once a team fight goes bad, it will go really bad. And Fnatic, again, as you mentioned, does notice that and they set up right away. A breeze is here instantly when that temple spawns, not allowing for Gazel to move in and set up at all. Now, finally, a turret will go down. 
second turret as well. And DRD needs to be auto-attacking things as much as he can. But now instantly clearing out those turrets, not allowing for anything to set up. And this is why Gazzle has such a hard time in competitive play. The counters are massive for that hero. But the, it's actually, if you look at it, like if the Gazzle is a little bit faster at the temple, look what happens at the top lane. The Harka is pushing in there. So at this point, Fnatic is already more or less deciding that they will take the temple, but they sacrifice the top lane. Now imagine a world in which Gazlo is able to set up at the bottom. All of a sudden, you are in a very awkward spot where the Haka is going to get value either way at the top, and Gazlo is going to get shots down at the bottom. Lucio now taking down here at that bot lane. That's a problem, though, because you already give up that position. The only thing you need to do here is soak experience. So him moving out a bit too much and then getting taken out, that's an issue. Fnatic is really getting their kills in. They are, and they're getting four. So you got the bottom four, the middle one being poked down. Nick has no wave clear, has no real kill potential against Mexi there with the heals being available as well as the roots. And so Expert now finally hitting level 10. Now for the choice, is it going to be Gravel Bomb or are we going Robogop? Uh, the one thing that I want to ask you is like, what do you think about the Tracer pick over the Vala? Because I must say that with everything we have, Lucio to speed them up and all the slows, I would have leaned towards Vala here, who just has, I don't know, like, if, to me, it just like seems like she would have fit in this comp really we well. Just... Whereas Tracer must, I, I mean, playing Tracer with this setup must be extremely tense. The Tracer does give the ability to go in for the hard engage after a green oh. and maybe kill Lee Ming, but there goes the... The Goblin. The Goblin, he's taken out, and he did pick up Robo Goblin, by the way, but it doesn't matter now, because Fnatic is just trying to shut down this composition. Big Burrow and Breeve dies in, and there's the Impale. Yeah, Impale is in. They go once more for Blade, and the Haka falls. Bad Benny barely getting away. Nick is still around and gets lasered to the ground for a moment, but survives miraculously, is able to get out there. That is Integrate, nearly took him out. But of course, Fnatic, knowing that they just took a few of your opponent's team members out, they can just simply move in and go for boss. Still have to be a bit careful. They don't have vision on the opponent's team, and there's not too much, but they will be able to secure that boss one way or another. And they also still have sync. Yep, boss being taken, sync being available. There's no way this can be taken, and Expert is aware of it. They spread out and attempt to grab some shots for now. Just trying to save the game at this point. Not trying to fall too far behind. They are one level missing. They are even in terms of talents, but Fnatic should be able to close that gap soon. The boss pushing in the bottom left, the temple being grabbed, Breeze and Smexy, a warrior in support, mind you, are contesting around the temple phase just because Fnatic has so much swagger right now in this game. Their momentum is really solid. So far, Expert's draft has not really panned out the way that they were envisioning it. Now we're having a forest fall in the middle of that. Benny is down. Arthur's eliminated. Five versus four on the map, and a numerical advantage also up here in that temple area, since we see Gazlo defending at the bot lane. A two-level lead nearly for Fnatic, and they have the extra talent looking strong here. And going into double burning rage even. Double burning rage to keep up with the wave clear, some added DPS in those fights. And at nine minutes in the game, a little less than nine minutes here, we already have Fnatic getting pressure on the keeps. A little bit of damage there from the temples are shining down. 14 to 12, mercenaries continue to be grabbed. Expert, how do you get back in this game, Kaldor? This is a really good question, and the one that I personally can't answer here. They, of course, they need to win a fight in the big one, but I just don't know how they're going to make that happen. They need kills, and they didn't get a single one just yet. They are yielding ground whenever Fnatic moves in, and you can't blame them since they are already so far behind. They need to wait for the 20, but they're still losing the heroes once again. There's the kill against Tracer. Nick is down, and they are trying to make it a double, going for Blade, and they are going to get him barely, but they do. Fnatic is just running the show here. Yep, they have four giants pushing down here. That's one of the strengths of Grey means. He gets on top of that tracer and he burns her down with that go for the throat. Now Keith being burned as it's going to be started to be focused. It's down to half health, low on HP. And Gazzle's doing Gazzle things in the top lane, but at the moment, Fnatic does not care as they will be able to take away the Keith, get catapult pressure, and they still have giants sieging away. Yeah, Giants take down more structures. Every structure you eliminate is another one that doesn't soak up temple shots. Gazlo is starting to pressure the wall up at the top. Fnatic doesn't really care about this. They already took down a keep. They are aiming for level 16. They're going to have a three-level advantage in just a moment. And AD already is even caught here. And I wonder why Tyrell even moved back. 
But he doesn't. He's not even like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have to be part of this kill, guys. I'm fine. ADRD pops up with speed. Attempts to reach. <laughs> like you can, you can run, now. but you can hide. Yeah, he's jumping around, <laughs> attempting the Hearthstone. This is actually buying. They're some delaying time. it. They're delaying the kill. And it works. I mean, look at this. Now he's he's going to die anyways. He, he will fall. The, and the thing is, now with him dying, that's 30 seconds on the clock, 20 seconds until the temples activate, which basically means they can make a play for double temple. So they're deliberately delaying the kill to make sure that they have an advantage. And to be honest, AD Arty should have just suicided right into them. Yeah, like run of the him game to actually cares. playing that game and allowing them to do that was a mistake. Well, Banana will grab the temples here. And as you mentioned, 10 seconds for no Gazo, which has allowed Banana to take both temples now, which are Hitting the keeps in the middle on the top. Bad Benny is hoping to slow this down. Nick is on the left here. He does not have a pulse bomb. I believe quite ready for him yet. Almost there. Person is floating on the same time. And finally, Gazzo does spawn. But Expert is just in a really poor spot. Their main damage, Nick, has been focused down by Quack next year. He goes in for the engage, he's go for the throat. Yeah, Li Ming uh, uh, forced him down, and then Quack tried to go in for the kill, but Benny once again will be in the back here, going in, Breeze jumping in as well as Bad Benny is running out of mana completely. The silence, Maxi, with a Twilight Dream, the Twilight Nightmare taking all of them apart. A triple kill for Fnatic. They are dominating this. And they are looking for a core rush here. Breeze leading the charge. Quacknix on the back left. He is low on mana. But a gray main on core is a deadly gray main indeed. As Breeze and Quacknix will start attacking. They are looking for the win. Now there is a spawn in 10 seconds here for Gazzo and multiple members for Expert. Can Blade slow this down? He needs to get on that gray main. Okay. <laughs> All right then. 17 to 14. Expert's core is falling 50%, 40%. Bad Benny finally does spawn. He will hit a howling blast, but that does not matter. Fnatic will take the victory and they will go up two to one. I love the attempt to delay. <laughs> it was like, no. All right, so two one for Fnatic. Um, yeah, that draft didn't work out. No, no, it did not, Kaldor. Any, any words from our specialist expert over here? You know. It happens, man. Sometimes you just gotta pull out the clamps, and sometimes the clamps don't work, you know? I'm still a bit surprised because, as I said, they... I mean, they completely got annihilated. Mm. We don't have to talk about that. They didn't get a single kill. That game was a short one, but for me personally, when I look at this, it's one of the things where they just don't throw drafts out. Yeah. The already that is. At least not in a game that is as important as this. So their strategy just completely did not work. Fnatic was shutting down Noel. I think if that draft gains momentum, it's much easier to execute it because he can set up better. But with Fnatic just riding the momentum that they got from getting the early kills that they had, they were always able to establish position first and they were always a talent up. So at that point, coming back for the Gaslo is... It's hard. You can't... Nearly impossible because, as you said, you need to set up. When can you set up? Usually when you are a little bit ahead and when you are in a position where you, you can, if you can force the ground where the fight takes place, then you can win. But for that to happen, you need to be ahead and you need to be just like pushing in. So if you get ahead with the draft, I can see that work. But with this particular setup, yeah, being behind. Robo Goblin in particular, it's very difficult to make that comeback moment actually happen. You need kind of the yeah. gravel bomb, high risk, high risk play if you are behind. But... We'll come back with maybe some more crazy drafts from Expert right after this commercial. We'll be back with game number four. of the storm play free and experience the new starcraft themed battlegrounds we did t for teen peace it has been my life's work through honesty and diplomacy there is no obstacle <laughs> There is no obstacle we can't overcome. Within each of our hearts lies... ...lies a yearning for peace. 
Even in this odd place, I truly believe that each of us can find a way to live in harmony! As I was saying, I am Jaina Proudmoore. We don't need to fight. But if you insist, so be it. as exiles and outcasts. But together, we can be more. A weapon to break the chains of oppression. A bastion for the hunted and the lost.